Good morning. Good morning to everybody here in the Avat Shalom uh, learning program. Good morning to everybody on Torah Anytime and to everyone on YouTube that watches us. We are in an Amud Yomi Shir, Baruch Hashem, Amud Yomi Bav Metziah Ezo Neshech, repeating a Shir which was not yet recorded, a better version in Ritz Hashem. Bav Metziah Samach Vav Amud Beis in the very, very bottom of the page. Okay, let's go. Samach Vav Amud Beis. So we were speaking, yeah, mentioning Rav Nachman's opinion. Rav Nachman says that a mechila betos, yeah, Rav Nachman says mechila betos, havia mechila. Mechila betos, if a person was moichel, a person gave in, had mechila on an amount of money based on a mistake, really, he doesn't get it back. Even though later on he woke up and smelled the coffee and realized that what, the mechila was based on the wrong halacha. He didn't know that the field wasn't sold. He thought it was sold to someone, let's say. And the other person, the supposed buyer, ate from his fruit. But that was wrong, really. He shouldn't have given it to him. It was based on the mistake, the fact that the so-called buyer got the field. Now he ate all the fruit, the buyer. So now the buyer is not supposed to give it back to the so-called seller. Because even if your mistake, even if your mechila was based on a mistake, still it was a mechila. Push and mishpat is flexible. And therefore, Rav Nachman says, not everyone agrees, that it's still called a mechila. One case Rav Nachman had in which he says, no, everything has to come back, and that is if it involves ribis, and we'll go back to that later. If you have a case in which, yeah, like the case of a person who borrowed money, and then at the end of the day gave the field to his friend as a collateral which morphed into a mechila, but really there was a smachta, meaning the fact that the field stayed in the hands of the Malve was one big sad mistake, shouldn't have stayed there. He gets back from him the field and the fruit that he ate during those three years. Why? Because it's ribis, or says Rashi, ke ribis ketut sadami. It's similar to ribis deoraisa, and that we're going to focus on today, because ribis, anything that looks like ribis, even especially ribis deoraisa specifically, which is ribis ketut that should go back to the original person. Nothing to do with your mistake, not your mistake. The idea is that ribis, which is like the Raisa, or definitely if it is the Raisa, should leave the hands of the Malve and go back to the hands of the Love. But besides that specific case, if you have a case of regular cases of Mechila Betos, is what? Havia Mechila. Once you gave in the money, you gave up, you gave up, even though it's based on a mistake. That's what Rav Nachman wanted to say says, wanted to say, and he actually said it. Now, the very, very end of the line, Omar Rove, says Rove, and we're up to today's page, Samech Zayin Omud Aleph, says Rove, said Rove, Havi Yativ Nechameda Rav Nachman, I was sitting in front of Rav Nachman, Ubay Le'utve Oino, I wanted to ask him and challenge him regarding what he said about, what, about, about the fact that Mechila Betoos Havi Mechila, and we say that, no, look at Oino. What's Oino? Samech Zayn is the very first page. Samech Zayn, 67, A, A, A. The beginning of 67, yeah? So now, Rav Nachman, you say that if I made a mistake by by mistake, then the money doesn't go back to me. You see that Oino, that's not the case, as we're going to see soon. We know about Oino. The Gemara is going to explain the question. Oino, when I was overcharged, yes. I was overcharged. It was a mistake on my side if somebody overcharged me. I can't go back to a shop if it's over a six and cancel the deal. Within, If it's just a six, then I can ask, ask, ask back for the difference. So you see, now like that. We're going to discuss it later. The Oidik, he noticed that I'm about to ask him something. Yeah, he discerned it. Chazisan Elonis. And then he wanted to bring us a proof from Elonis. He wanted to prove himself right from another story about a woman who cannot really get married and got married by mistake, called an illness, we'll explain it later, and that shows us that Rav Nachman is right, and I know Batos, Mechila Batos, Havi Mechila. Let's go, let's explain this. Up until now, we just spoke about the formula, the Gemara is going to explain each and every part of the sentence of Rav, what was this back and forth between Rav and Rav Nachman? Says the Gemara, let's explain. I know the Mechila Batosi, I know is a mistake, right? Is mechila. I gave in. A guy wanted to sell me a phone. Yeah, for how much this kosher used phone is maybe hundred shekel at the best. Yeah, somebody wants to cheat a guy who just came here from America, 
and he says, you know, get that for 300 shekels, and that's a good price for you. It's mamish oino, super oino. And what do we say? The mechila, yeah, the, the forgiving, so to speak, the giving of the extra 200 was a result of a mistake. It was misled by the seller, right? And yet, velavi mechila, we see that it's not called mechila, right? We don't say, okay, listen, you gave in, you willingly gave 300, even though it was based on a mechila, on a toast, on a mistake, yeah, we don't say what's been been and finished and we don't go back. We say, yes, you claim back the mistake. Even though it's based on a on, on a mistake, you claim back what you gave in, the mechila. So you see, not like you, we see against Rav Nachman, the oidik. Rav Nachman noticed that I'm about to ask that. Rav Nachman in his chokhmah figured out what Rav is about to ask. Hazis and Elonis, and then he proved himself right. You know, he punched me back from the other direction proving himself right from another Mishnah in at the end of the 11th parak of Ksubas, I saw the Mishnah, and the Mishnah there is Haray Elonis. It's a Mishnah about an Elonis, a woman that cannot have children, that doesn't exactly look like a woman. She's not a full woman. She can't have kids. She doesn't have a proper uh, womb, whatever, the chest. She, she she talks like a man, whatever. She's not a person who, you know, a person can have children with or even less than that. The Mechil Batosi. There's a case over there of the Elonis where Mechila Batos is involved. Vavi Mechila. And yet the Mechila over there, even though the Mechila is based on a mistake, the giving in the money is based on mistake, still we say, ah, what was given to the husband was given. What's the story over there? Let's see. That's not. It says in the Mishnah over there, yeah, at the end of the 11th parak of, of Ksubas. Hamema Enes. What's Mema Enes? We're going to talk here about three women who have, I would say, strange marriages. All kinds of, you know, iffy, funny marriages. Number one, Mimaenis. Mimaenis is a girl who's below Bas Mitzvah. That girl, her father died. So with the Orisa, she cannot accept her own Kiddushin. Neither her father can accept her Kiddushin because he's hopefully in Ganeden, hopefully nowhere else. So nobody can accept her Kiddushin. Such a girl is very vulnerable because bad people may abuse her, may take advantage of her. That's what Rasha says, Hefker. There can be Noeg Bamineg Hefker. So Chazal, where Metaken in Suinder Abonon, Chazal established a Nisuin, a Kiddushin, and eventually Nisuin. There are just Midorabon on her mother and her brothers, who are older than her. They can arrange the marriage. They can accept the Kiddushin for her. Okay, very nice. However, because that Kiddushin, those Kiddushin are just Midorabon on, those Kiddushin are extremely easy to get out of. She just has to say in front of people, I don't like that daddy. Don't be with him anymore. I don't want him, and she's out of the marriage. It's the only time in the Torah, as far as I know, that a woman can initiate the divorce. So because she can initiate the so-called divorce so easily, and he, the husband, the big boy, was not Megarish her, that's why she does not deserve a ksuba. I didn't explain it last time, but that's what Rashi says here in the Sotah, the Mishnah in Ksubas. Why does a woman get the ksuba? Only when it's not her fault. If a woman is Mizdan, Nechaz V'Sholom, addresses Lot Sanua, yeah, she doesn't get the ksuba or whatever. She fed him tray for food. She did uh, naughty things. She behaved naughty. Then what? She does get a ksuba. A ksuba a woman gets when it's the husband's initiative, and she's a good girl. And that's why they have a lot of fights in Beisdin nowadays about that. Now, Mema Enes, not a matter of fault, who asked you to get divorced. He's happy with the divorce. She's the one who initiated it. You initiate a divorce, you don't get a ksuba. That, that's where it goes. She didn't get a get. Now, but she's not the issue right now. That's just, you know, the warm-up. The Ashnia. Ashnia is a woman who is related to a relative that's also to marry the Oraisa. Yeah. Let's say, right, your your uh, uncle's... Uh, yeah. What's wrong? So let's say there are a few women that a person may not marry with the Oraisa, daughter, sister, mother of the Some women are further relatives, which you're not allowed to marry with such marriage is also with the Rabbanon. The children are kosher. Rabbanon will not go that the kids should be mamzerim. The children are kosher. It's supposed to let the coin and, and what's the name in the uh, halal or grusha, the kids are halalim. Here, the woman, there's all cheshman, which I'm not going into, the woman in that marriage has an interest. She's not losing anything by marrying her, uh, let's say, uh, grandson, which is only with the Rabbanon, you'll be surprised, yeah? So therefore, because the woman in that situation wants to marry the guy, He's not losing anything mitzad the children or mitzad the status or mitzad anything. Nobody becomes possible. So Rabbanon wanted to hit her in the pocket. And Rabbanon said, if you marry a guy who you're not supposed to marry with the Rabbanon, he's too close to you with the Rabbanon, such a person, let's say kind of nephew, which is something to the Rabbanon, something to the Raisa, if it's with the Rabbanon, you don't get a ksuba. No question for now, one second.
The Elonis, what's the Elonis? <clears throat> we explain the Elonis. What about her? The Elonis, we assume, although it's not always true, the assumption is that when she went on the dates, put a lot of makeup, she practiced her voice, and she looked like a real nice woman, although she's not really a functional woman, and she didn't show him the doctor's notes that she's an Elonis, can never have children. That never really happens in the Shidduchim world, that people don't reveal all the information. It's just science fiction from the Gemara. Right, but here the Elonis, she didn't reveal everything, and maybe she thinks that she's married. But Lamaisa, he is a mekachtos. That the marriage is not marriage. Once he realizes she's an Elonis, sooner or later, at some point, then it's not really marriage. Yeah. So now th this is this is the marriage we're going to focus on, and what? Thank you for your patient, patience. Patience. Lahen, those three women, all of them, each and every one of them, and Eloik Suba. When she gets divorced, so to speak, who? The Elonis. I don't know if it's a divorce, because never, there was never marriage, right? Retrospectively, she doesn't get anything. She doesn't get the Ksuba, right? Even money that she brought into the Ksuba, she doesn't get back. Hmm. She invested in the marriage. She wrote into the Ksuba. She was a rich woman. She was a lawyer, I don't know, before she got married. And what? Now, sorry. Now she has something in the marriage. It stays there. And that's the that's actually the 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 motto through the entire Mishnah. Velo Peros. She had an apartment she brought in, right? Who raked in the fruit of Nikse Milug? The husband. She can't say, hey, excuse me, for two years I was married to you, you ate all the fruit. It wasn't really marriage. Oh, if so, I'm getting back all the fruit. So we say, no, the fruit stay with him. Let's say he raked two million dollar rent. That could happen in two years in a very nice place, right? She can't say, I want the two million dollar back from you. Below Mizoinois, Mizoinois, in other words, now the Mizoinois, as you guys said very nicely, and I thought in the Rishonim also, let's say she incurred debt when she was married, and who's supposed to pay the woman's debt? The husband, if it's for food. She went shopping in all different uh, shops, whatever, for clothes, for, for clothes, for food, reasonable things. He, after the marriage, does, after the marriage is ended retroactively, he doesn't have to pay anything. He doesn't owe her a dime. Below Beloys, Rashi says the clothes. When she got married, she really brought him very nice clothes. Hat, jacket, trimal, capita, jeans, whatever he likes. I don't know what he brought him. I don't know. Undershirts. Yeah, tzitzis. She brought it into the marriage very happily. He stays with them. According to Rashi, even if the clothes are still nice and fresh, the balui, meaning he just wore them a little bit, he stays with the clothes. So basically, that's really kivyochal unfair. Why? Because we said that the marriage is really now just from the start. And yet all the stuff she brought because she thought she was married, stay with him. So what do you see? It's not a matter of unfair. What is it? Mech, not mekach. Mechila betos. Havi mechila. You see, that's a proof of Nachman. We see that the mechila by mistake. She mistakenly thought she was married. She, was, she didn't trick him. Yeah. She thought it was good marriage. And, you know, eventually he's going to love me just the way I am, you know, with all my things. And therefore, we say that, or not therefore, in spite of that, we say, although he wasn't married, since she was Moichel, based on the mistake, we say that it stayed with him. So we see that the, yeah, that the, what's his name? Mechila Batos, Avi Mechila. Yes, thank you for your patience. We have a chat in here, yeah. Okay, so before we go on, let's continue and then we'll add a certain notes that was said over here. I got a question in the notes about Sara Menon of Roma Vinu. So Sara Menu had two issues. First of all, she was an Elonist. And secondly, Sara Menu was related to Avram. But Sara Menu was his niece. A niece you're allowed to marry. You're allowed to marry your niece, first of all. That's a mutra, it's even a mitzvah to marry your sister's daughter because you bring her to the family. So uncle can marry the niece. Could be even a mitzvah. Secondly, the fact she was an alien is sorry, mean, is not a problem. Why? First of all, before Matan Torah. Secondly, the Mishnah does say there that if the person knows, if the man knows she's an alienist, and he willingly says, I still love you, he still wants her, in spite of that, he's okay with her being an alienist, not such nice personality she has, or he already has children, right? So he's no chiyuv, uh, not mamish chiyuv, let's say, or pruvu, maybe l'eravata nechidecha. So therefore, if a woman is an analyst knowingly, then that doesn't apply before Shemishnah. We're talking here about a guy who married an analyst unaware 
of the fact she's an alienist. So Avram Avinu knew she was an alienist, I assume. And anyway, that's a whole different story. And that's my answer to the question that came up in the text now. Now, let's continue, and then we'll say the note. Now, the Gemara now wants to completely shatter both the, the, the question and the answer. Both the, 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 the attempt to disprove and the proof are both wrong, are both unrelated to the case of Mechila Betov. Why? Says the Gemara, Velohi, the line starts with the word Velohi Mizoinus. Velohi, that's wrong. Loi Oino have your Tuvte. Oino is not a question on Rav Nachman. Velo Elonis Maseyali. The story of Elonis doesn't help Rav Nachman, doesn't endorse Rav Nachman's opinion. Why? Loi Oino Tuvte, the Gemara now elaborates. Oino is not a question on Rav Nachman. De lo Yoda de Isi Oino de Machil Gabei. As I explained last week, the person of Oino is not unaware of the, the side issues, the background. Is not aware of the actual facts. Is not moichel with a mistake. Is not moichel at all. Which means, when a person, yeah, it's a little bit like the person. Uh, I'll give you a moshe later. Yeah, let's first focus here. A person who really, really thinks that the price market of this uh, <laughs> uninviting phone is three hundred. He just landed here from uh, Wichupicha, Ohio, wherever to Israel. And he thinks this is really 300, it's a metzia, is completely unaware of any fact whatsoever. He really is sure that this is 300, right? He's not mevater on 200, knowing or thinking of a zaytidika thing, of a side thing. He's unaware of what's going on, of the dry facts. As opposed to Mr. Mechila Betos, let's go back to Rav Nachman's story. A person who knows, I have a palm tree, I sold the palm tree to my friend. He ate, he thinks it was a sale. It wasn't a sale. Why? Because although there was a sale, it was a sale which was premature. It was double shalom baloilom. Allah states that it's not a sale, which by the way is a machloikis. It's like selling something that didn't yet come to the world. But he knows all the facts. He knows. He knows what? This guy ate from the palm tree that used to belong to me, I don't know, 100 kilos that are worth so-and-so. I'm aware that it was mine, now it's his. I know exactly what's going on. I'm missing a side point here. I moichel those 100 kilos. Why was he moichel 100 kilos? Because he thought that was a, a halachic thing here, which he does not know the halacha. He thinks really there was a sale, and there wasn't a sale. But that's a side thing. But he's aware of what's going on. He knows the facts are absolutely open to him. He knows exactly that this guy ate 100 kilos of dates. He watched him every day. Therefore, such a mechila is called mechila betos. The Shenken the Oino is unaware of the dry facts. He just doesn't know what's, he doesn't know what's going on in He really is 100% sure that $300, 300 shekels, excuse me, is the price. So he, he didn't say, okay, there's 100, which is the normal price, and the 200 shekels, let's say the guy would have swindled him differently. He would say, you know, there's 100 shekels, but 200 shekels, it, give this one, uh, give him an extra 200, and uh, because of some other halachic thing, because Rabboni made the takono, I don't know, to pay extra for a coach or phone, I don't know what, some shtus. That would be different. He knows there's 100, he knows 200, and Moichel the 200 for some foolish thing from the side, which, which came out to be wrong. That would be good. It's not the case here. He is just not aware completely of the price. He just doesn't know the prices to begin with. He doesn't know the, 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 facts, the, the facts right from the start. And therefore, that's not a claim against Rav Nachman. Now, below Elonis Meseyali, Elonis. On the other hand, the fact that that girl that is not a real full-fledged woman, and never will be, by the way, is doesn't get back her, all her stuff, all the money she invested in the marriage, she doesn't get back, that does not help Rav Nachman. Why? Why? Because the Nihalo, she's happy, the Tepuk Alashma, the issues. She's happy that people will have the name, she should have the name of a married woman. What could be the biggest dream, you know, such a girl, the Elonis, even if she knows, even if she knows that it's not real marriage, she's not so stupid. Let's say she was told by someone, you know that your marriage is not real marriage? She's not a stupid person just because she's an Elonis. And she says in her heart, she doesn't mind. She would still say, nevertheless, I invest into this fake marriage, so-called marriage, as long as it lasts, as long as he's happy with me, whether it's real marriage or not marriage, shma the issues. You know what people down the street say? They say that that girl, who all her life, could never begin to dream of a chos and is married. For that status, for that COVID, for that name of being called a married woman, 
that is of itself she's willing to pay a lot of money. It's not mechila betos. It's mechila with 100% awareness. And therefore, it's still considered to be a mechila. People spend a lot, a lot, a lot of money for status, for being called. You know, they joke around. They say some people uh, love their spouses and some people love to be married, to be called married. You know, they don't care so much about the spouse. They want to be called, you know, under that, you know, status. It's a good thing for them. So that girl, that's what she is, mistoma. And therefore, we say you can't prove from there that mechila betos is mechila. Now, I want to point out what Baruch added, and that is what you said before, that interesting conversation between Rav Nachman and Rav. I'm not 100% sure about it, but it could be. Rav Nachman was so that he's about to be challenged. Possibly he knew that the question is going to be from Oyinor, and he answered from Elonis. Why? That's not a depth conversation. It's Poshet. He says, you have a Mishnah against me, but I have a Mishnah for me. I have a Mishnah that supports me. That's how Amoroim always worked. You bring a Tana against an Amoroim. He says, okay, another Tana that I'm like, I, I follow the pin of another Tana. That could be the mechanism here. Although at the end of the day, it does make a difference because at the end of the day, both question and answer were really, they really fell off the chessboard. Now up to the next story. The story of the Schwindling agent. Interesting story now with a very different ways to understand it in the Rishonim, and we're going to plunge straight through. I'll actually give a small introduction. Be ready for the fact that we're going to have our world turned upside down regarding Ribis Ktsutsa. The definition of Ribis Ktsutsa, which up until now we think means what? Ribis was pre-decided, spoken about. And we know how much ribis is going to be taken. That's how we thought up until now is ribis ktsutsa, right? Wrongly or rightly so, we thought ribis ktsutsa, your kutset, you specified, I'll lend you the money, it's all vo, and you'll have to give me back instead of a thousand, thousand two hundred. Okay? That is what we call ribis ktsutsa. That is going to be turned upside down. Aitisa, there was a woman. Aitisa, there was a woman. The Omal Gava, she told the man, she was like her agent, her shliach, she told the man, Zil Zabin Ara Mikrivai, go and buy me a piece of land for my relatives. Okay, go get a piece of land from relatives. Why Dafka relatives? I don't know. Maybe it shows that she can manage with the relatives. Ozal, he went. Zoban Lo, he went in order to find her piece of land that she should buy with the money. She has cash. She gave him cash in her hand, in his hand. Buy me a piece of land. He's going to buy a piece of land from the relative Omar Lay, says the relative that's about to sell his own land for the money. That relative told who? Told the agent, Izuzi. Now, there's different ways to understand it. I'm following way number one. The Gro brings down to Shulchanoch. So the Shulchanoch also. Ihavul Izuzi, if I have Zuzi, if I have money back, right now I need the cash. Oh, you came just on time. You're giving me a million dollars for the piece of land. Oh, that's really nice. Thank you very much, Baruch. Yeah, the, I, you know, but if I ever get a million dollars back, if I get promoted at work, if I get the lottery ticket right, yeah, then if I ever have money, would you give me back the land? Yeah. In other words, I'd like to reverse things, and I would like actually to make it tonight. Yeah, so they say. I want to make it tonight. Would you give it back to me? Because that's the condition I want to sell it on. I want to sell it in condition that I'll be able to reverse the deal. And once I give her back the money, then what? I want to get my land back. Omerle, now the shliach, the agent was evasive. The shliach wasn't clear. What did he say? At venavla achi, you and her are brothers or your relatives, which means you'll manage it between the two of you. Because you and her, navla either means the name of the woman, navla just means another person, and so another pshat, very nice, it says, Navla is the nul, is what you uh, you spin, the, the thread. So women always used to spin in the old times. And the chalisha chokhma ele bepelech, yeah, the, the spinning wheel. So Bekitza, you and her brothers, which are shonim explain, listen to this, I assume, I hope, I guess she will be compliant, she'll be happy to give you back. Oh. But it's not like the condition was really met. Uh, get it? He wanted Mamish to make it as a condition. If I get it back, the karka for money, then yes. If no, no. And the agent was, eh, I hope so. Agent wants to what? 
make peace, make everyone look nice to each other. And he says, I hope, I guess, you'll manage, everything will be fine. But he did not say, yes, the conditions being met. What about her? She's out of the picture. Omar Rabba Baravuna says, Rabba Baravuna rule, call at benavla achi. Whenever the person responds in an evasive way and says, I hope, and maybe, and I, you know, let's hope for the best, but he did not actually confirm that the condition is there, the condition will be fulfilled, then, we skip the word Omar, oh, he relies on his own words, but not on the words of the Shliach, that's one shot, which means, according to Shulchanov, means as follows. That person says, I want to have this condition met. And I stay with that condition. According to Shulchanov, Logomor Makni means, I am not willing to be makne unless my condition is being met. And as long as the card is in my hands, I have the cards in my hands. As long as you don't fulfill my condition, no game, no playing. Because I want to have that condition once in a year or two or three or ten years I come with a million dollars, she'll reverse and give him back the land. The question is, according to this version, what's a Kiddush? Of course, he has the cards in his hands. Says the Goin, in a Goinish way, that's the Goin. Why are we stressing twice here that the agent was evasive? Who cares? That's the point. And that's the beauty of it. That's the psychology of Chazal. If the agent would have said, you and your conditions, then we say what? Either he's not fulfilling it bichlal, right? If there's no Kenyan, or the Merchus says, who cares? You're not interested. I know I made the condition. I'm selling you this by condition. You don't have to agree. However, since the Shliach said, hopefully, and maybe, and I'm sure things will be okay, I'm 90% sure that she'll be okay with giving it back. Maybe the person gave up on his condition. Maybe he was really soothed by the silver tongue of the agent. And it's not a condition for him anymore. And therefore, what would happen if in four, five, ten years' time, really, he comes to the money and she says, ah, I love that piece of land. I've been the landlady for ten years. Get out of here with your money. Maybe he would say that the seller would say, mm, you're right. Because I was maybe relying on his hopefully and maybe and he yet toiv tismoch alai. That was a havamina. Because that's how the conversation ended. Kamash Malan, we don't say that. Wow. Kamash Malan, it's having of the Helig Gemore. Kamash Malan, we don't say that. We say no. As long as he said the condition, he left the room, and the condition was said by the seller and was never, yeah, and he never, never retracted from that, never budged from that, the condition stays. And therefore, according to Shulchan Aruch, if he comes back in two years' time or ten years' time with the money, then what? Up until now, there was a sophic, right? It was a sale on condition. Once he came back with the money, he can force her out retroactively and retrospectively and lemafraya. And really, right? Absolutely. And right from the start, it was not really a sale because he said it's only a sale. It, it's not a new sale. That's all worth of it tonight. That's all worth of it tonight. He didn't say, let's make a new condition. If I come back with the money, everything will be reversed. So now, according to that, what would happen if he comes back in 10 years' time or, I don't know, 10 days or 100 years? Then what? He comes back to money. All those years that she ate from the fruit, what was she really? A malva. Why didn't he kick her out? What do you mean kick her out? Because she was a either a potential buyer if he never comes with the money, right? If he comes with the money, she was not a buyer. What was she? By definition, which happens all the time again and again in our parak. What? She was a malva. You guys, amazing. You guys rock. She was a malva because just he needed the money. For him, it was just a halvo, the collateral. Came back with the money, give me back my collateral. And that's what happened at the end of the day. That's shot number one. Shot number two is the Rambam. Rambam holds that he said it as a, not as, he said it not as a question, as a statement. That's a tnai. If the tnai is not being met, Havamina is that, not just Havamina, the Maskona is, if she doesn't know, and she starts with maybes and that, 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 and I hope so, and everything will be nice and rosy, and trust me, and shmask me, that means that he's not willing, really, bichlal to sell it. No sale right from the start. It's not a sale with a condition. The condition is so strong, it's a statement, and not a question. As far as I'm concerned, she just entered the land, not even as a havamin she'll ever be the owner. Why? 
because my condition wasn't met, meaning what? My condition wasn't met means that now she doesn't know about the condition. I know that's my condition. She entered the land without following my conditions. She's a squatter. She's down there illegally right from the start. Why did I allow her didn't kick her out? Because she lent me money. I'm scared of her. And I know, as far as I'm concerned, right from the start, it's just, I don't mean really scared of her. I mean to say, right from the start, it's Alba. She lives in a Lila land that she bought something. Good for her. As far as I know, I borrowed money from her, right? And now I let her use the land. I know right from the start that there was no, my conditions were not met to be selling it to her. She's just not a buyer. In other words, according to Shulchan Aruch, she's a potential buyer, potential Malva. The Fidu Rambam, she's the Malva right from the start. Every day she's there is just one big loan, no Kenyan whatsoever, because I only ask him to say, selling, if her conditions are met. You start your Shtuyot with maybes, it's still called Shtuyot. Same, same thing. So at the end of the day, according to both Rambam and Shulchan Aruch, the end of the day, there are differences, for example, Tzad Echad Beribis. And the Kamina between Rambam and Shulchan Aruch, is it Tzad Echad Beribis? You mentioned, what kind of ribis do we have here potentially, by the way? My turn to ask you questions for a change. Yeah. What? what? I don't know if it's good or not, it's going to be a question. But what, what? what's the ribis? Which ribis is she eating here? She gave me and she, she's eating the fruit. Very good. Beautiful. She gave million, she'll get back million, and she ate fruit worth 10 million. Meanwhile, I don't know. There was a fancy hotel there that rakes billions every year, right? And she gets all that, maybe. So that could be potential ribis. According to the Shulchanoch, it's a maybe ribis, maybe no, right? Depends how it's going to end up. Maybe there'll be a sale because they'll never come with the money. According to Rambam, it was, a, it, was a land, it was a loan right from the start. But at the end of the day, when he does come back with the money, and that was a story, at the end of the day, she's kicked out. And at the end of the day, either right from the start or from the end, whichever end of the stick, it was no sale when he came back with the money. He was a loan right from the start. One. Okay. Actually, it's a potential time for questions now. Um, yes. Okay. Um, yes. Now comes the question. One. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Continues the Gemara. Now we're going to redefine Ribis Ktsutsa. Says the Gemara like this: Allah, the land itself, Hadra, the land does go back. She knew. She didn't know. Rambam Shochanor, whoever you, whoever you, wherever you, wherever you look, the land has to go back. He made a condition; it was not met. He, she knew. She didn't know. Who cares? I said right from the start. And yes, Ellen, maybe it was recorded, actually. Yeah? He said with Adim, with whatever, maybe she didn't know. But Lamaisa, he said, on condition that I'll get back the land if I give back the money. Gave back the money, the land goes back to him. That's out of the question. However, Peiri Mai, the question is, what about the fruit? How do we treat the fruit that she ate all these years? For three, four, five, ten years, she was eating all the grapes. Hopefully she sold some of them, didn't eat all of them yet. She made benefit. She, I don't know, the, the rent. And now she has a lot of extra money that she made. Besides the million she got back, she has million plus two, three hundred thousand. What do you do with that? What? Remember Ablazer's rule? Ablazer, which we pass in like, said what? Ribis Ktsuta, which is the Oraisa, you have to give back, but based in. Ribis Medorabona, which is Avak Ribis, you don't have to give back, right? But the evidence you took it, nobody can claim it back from you. I'm not saying it's a tzaddik for keeping it, maybe Bidei Shomai, maybe not, but you don't have to give it back to Dayonim. The question is, how do we treat all those fruit that she ate right from the start? Is this Ribis Ktsutsa or not Ribis Ktsutsa? Hmm. How can you say it's Ribis Ktsutsa? Says the Gemara, Ribis Ktsutsa, maybe it's Ribis Ktsutsa. I was surprised, because I thought Ribis Ktsutsa, as Rashi hints to later on, is Ribis that was decided upon right from the start. Did they say the word Ribis when she came into the land? No. Especially according to Shulchan Aruch, it was a potential sale, right? And it was a sale right from the start. Conditions weren't met. Yes, met, but it started as a sale. A. B. Ribis wasn't mentioned. She came in there. She ate and ate and ate and ate something that at the end of the day came out to be Ribis. And yet we have it sad to say that it's called Ribis Ktsutsa. Why? I'll tell you why. And that's a huge Kiddush for me. Why could that be Ribis Ktsutsa? If we go into the land knowing that all those fruit are going to be extra, because she... The con what was the condition? See, that would help you also. The condition, the big condition, condition made was what? If I, I one second, if I come to you, yeah, with million dollar cash or maybe a bank transfer, 
Then I'll get the money. Then I'll get the land back, not the fruit. And you knew she's going to eat the fruit because she, in her cuckoo land, in her lala land, she's the buyer. And now, of course, she'll eat all the fruit. What do you think she can do for? To, to I don't know, say till him all day. She's going to cultivate the land. So, me mainly, if you know ribis will happen, ribis will occur, that's called ribis ketutza. At the end of the day, from the start, from the beginning, there was a law. Yes. What do you think she's going to do there? Of course, she's going to eat. You, mister, this is really not to say this, really halva, okay. So it's really halva at some stage, right? And and what else happened? You knew she's going to eat the extra, could, and you knew it right from the start. Wow. That alone could be possibly called ribis ketutza. Even though ribis wasn't mentioned, and not even the number. Yeah, and a huge chiddush is, Rashi says at the beginning of the parak, Daf Samech, Rashi says, or Samech Aleph, Rashi says, sometimes he doesn't bear fruit at all. Maybe there won't be any fruit. Maybe the whole thing will be a loss. And that's what it's not, Ribis Ketutza says Rashi over there. Here we have it sad to say that if you almost sure that there will be Ribis, even though it was discussed, but you knew it when the ball started rolling and she came in there, that could potentially be called Ribis Ketutza. Don't faint, but that's what seems to be the sad. I'm not inventing it. I'm basing it on Rishonim. Okay? <laughs> wow. Okay, so there we have such a tad. Therefore, it tells her, lady, give me back all the fruit you ate. Let's make a cheshman. It was, I don't know, half a million. Give me back half a million. Or Dilma, or maybe. The simpler tzad is what? Just avakribis. Nobody spoke about it. It's not a clear number. Nobody promised her anything. We knew it's going to happen. But A, no, it wasn't discussed at all. Ribis wasn't discussed. As far as she's concerned, she's buying. It's not ribis, right? And thirdly, sometimes there's no fruit that, that sometimes it doesn't yield fruit whatsoever. You look like you really need to say something. Yeah, okay. Right. He thought he was getting a lot. Right, Zeder. Okay, but at the end of the day, at the end of the day, it was really alone. It's Sad Echad Berivis. At the end of the day, Lafid Rambam, she's misinformed, she's really Malva. She's a Malva. Nobody blames her. She's a Malva without knowing she's a Malva. Lafid <laughs> Rambam, right? And the man says she's, and Khanami, the agents, it's his fault. The butler did it. The agent did it. At the end of the day, Lamaisa, there was a loan here. So she has to give it back. It's Bishoy Gig, say there. There's a tad. Or there's another tad. No. That what nothing was discussed, nothing was decided, nothing's clear. And therefore, at the end of the day, it's Ava Kribis Medorabonon. And therefore, she keeps it and it doesn't go out. She, he doesn't claim it back. Now, Omar Abba Baravuna, Mistaba makes sense. Ki Ava Kribis Havu Veniotin Bedayonin. Says Omar Baravuna, like the tzad, which makes more sense to us. I don't know if we're right. The Rabbi Baravuna is on our side. He says, no, it's just Abba Kribis. It wasn't discussed, wasn't spoke about, plus the fact that there's a tzad mechire. It came to her as a sale. It's also a factor. So just Abba Kribis, the Omar Rabba. The real version is not Rabba, but Rabba. Rabba says the same as Rabba Baravuna. Ki Abba Kribis Abu veniotin bedayonim. It's not Ribis Dorai, it's just the Rabbanon, and you don't take it out of the Yonim. By the way, the third sheet of the Rosh, I'm going to discuss later, what I told you on, on Thursday. Omar Labai Rabba. We have to see the next piece because the next piece will give us a, a very good way to gauge one case against the other. Abai is now asking, what did Rabbi just, let's summarize a little bit. There was a terrible mistake here. One side thinks it's a halva, the other side thinks it's a mechira. On the loiva side, he knows he's giving ribis. It wasn't discussed, wasn't said, but there are two factors here. It wasn't discussed. No numbers were discussed. Nobody said, or you're going to eat ribis, you're going to get the extra. And she also thought it's a mechira. And it started off as a mechira. The starting point here on both sides was mechira. Elamai, the condition was met, especially Lefish Lochanoruch. Lefish Lochanoruch, he has a tzad, it's a mechira. The seller, right? Depends what's going to happen. There are two tzad in Lefish Lochanoruch. It will be either mechira or alone. So now, what causes us to say it's Ava Kribis? Abba is asking another question that will, that will highlight the reason why it's Ava Kribis in our case. Abba is asking a very, very simple question. Amal Abayi Rabba, you Rabba, you just told him it's Ava Kribis, Mashkanta Mai, two words, Mashkanta Mai, what's with the Mashkanta? Get off my, my bank every first in the month, Mashkanta, Mashkanta Mai. In other words, what would be in a very straight, simple case of Mashkanta? Which means, the collateral lend. It's Alvo, right? I lent you, I lent you a million dollars, okay? Good for you, nice. I'm asking as a collateral, your million dollar field, Yields amazing, I don't know, corn and potatoes and cotton and whatever. Yeah, good, very nice. Yeah, good. 
And I know that in a few years time, I'm going to give you back, you're going to give me back the million. Meanwhile, I ate all the fruit. Now, on one hand, it's a loan, clear loan. On the other hand, nobody says that I'm going to eat it as ribis. We didn't sit in the lawyer's office and said, Akiva, the lender, will eat all the corn and will sell all the cotton and will do all that as ribis. It's alva, but the ribis wasn't specified, but we knew it's going to happen. You think I'm going to sit there and not eat anything? You think I'm a shlamazo? Comes the Gemara and pinpoints the question. Beautiful. Awesome. Over there, by the case of the mistaken agent, of the misleading agent, I call it the case of the misleading agent. Good title for YouTube. My wholesome time in my Mishum Deloy Katzli. Over there, nothing was discussed, right? Where? In the case of the woman, the whole idea is nothing was discussed. Nobody told you're going to sit down for Halvo and Ribis. Not at all. Wait a second. Here, too, in my case, although it's a clear Halvo, nobody discussed Ribis. Maybe they forgot. Maybe they didn't care. I said, I'm lending you a million. In three years' time, I'm going to get back million in cash. And nobody forgot or conveniently forgot to mention that meanwhile, for three years, I can make a heck of a lot of money from selling cotton. Maybe there's an oil field over there. Maybe I'll build a hotel. And nobody discussed it. And yet we say, ah, not yet. Because of that, it wasn't discussed. That's what's going to have called Ribis Ktsutsa. It's called Aber Kribis, as I thought all my life. Yeah, It's not discussed. It's not Ribis Ktsutsa. It happened by itself. It just happened, the eight and eight. It's an extra that came out of nowhere. And therefore, that not discussed, that nowhere, it wasn't discussed. It's not called Ribis Ktsutsa. Therefore, I'm not going to give it back. It's the Rabbanon. I'm not giving back all the field, all, all the money that I ate from here, that I gained. Or, Dilma, or maybe, oh, no, maybe we can say no, like you said. Over there, the case of the misleading agent, you know why it's not called Ribis Ksutza? Because it started as a sale, not a loan, and therefore it started as a sale. Plus, it wasn't clear, and mainly it was a sale. On her side, it's just a sale. On his side, it's a maybe official chanoch. Ah, it started as a sale. We say, okay, that's not Ksutza. But wow, which means here we come with a whole new chat. Because it's alvo in Rabbi's case, which is regular Mashkanta, I lend million, it's alvo. Nobody wants to buy the field. I lend you the money, you give me back money in three years. Meanwhile, I'm collateralizing your land and sitting there. Even though I didn't mention the ribis, the mere listen to this, the mere fact it's alvo. And we know in our minds that I'm gonna eat the corn and eat the field and swimming the pool and rent out the hotel. I know, without mentioning, and the fact it's halvo, and ribis is sort of naturally expected, that alone is called ribis ktsutza. And even if it's not ribis ktsutza, it's ke ribis ktsutza, it's too close to come for comfort. To be ribis ktsutza, because it's halvo, with a known, uh, known ribis to come. That alone could be already ktsutza. Without a word mentioned about ribis. And then the tzad to say that's called ribis ktsutza. Omar Lee. So, Omar Lee, he answers no. Awesome time. He goes with the first son. Awesome time am I. Mishum the loikatsle. Achanami loikatsle. Rabbi answers no. It's not called Rivis Ktsutsa, even though it's Alvo. Alvo is worse than Mechira, always all over the Ferric. However, because Rivis wasn't decided, wasn't pre decided at all, wasn't mentioned, it's not called Rivis Ktsutsa. And therefore, also in the case of lending money, if I lent million, and you're going to give me back a million, I, L'Chatechila, should not eat. He writes me, I should deduct. But if I did not deduct, if I'm a Roshe, with the Rabbana, I don't keep the Rabbanon. Or I didn't know, and I got the million, and I want to insist on keeping the other 300,000, I keep them. Because it's Ribis the Rabbanon, which she cannot force out of my pocket. That's what we're saying. Now, Omar of Papi, Omar of Pape, Ovad Rabina Uvda, oh, Ravina himself is the die, and what did he do? He actually acted upon his own psak, the chashiv. He calculated all the fruit that was eaten by the malve during three, four, five years. I don't know, a million in cotton or in oil. The apic peiri, and he got out the peiri, meaning he treated it like, oh, one shot is what? He got out, meaning out of the pocket, he sued the person who sat in the land and ate all these years. The loike abba he treated it as ribis ktsutsa. He treated it as ribis ktsutsa. Like what? Unlike Rabbi Baravuna, right from the beginning of the sugya. Which means, in both cases, either by halvo, or if he's not like Rabbi Baravuna, we're talking about a sale, 
But definitely, Ravina treated such a case as Ribis Tzutza, and therefore he got it out. He made a calculation in Beis Din. The first year, you ate X amount. Second year, sir, three, four, five, you ate all that amount, you give it back to him. He treated his Ribis Tzutza. Okay, Schuto, he's an Amora. He argues with Rabbi Ravuna. Big question by the Rishonim. Toysis and the Rosh ask, how could that be? Happens to be the Ravina is the one who clearly said at the beginning of the of the of the Perik, if you remember, I don't know if you remember. Remember, we had the few cases how Goim treat ribis and the way they demand ribis, we say ribis should be taken back. Remember? Let's say in the base Mishpat, in the based in uh, not based in, in the court in uh, I don't know, America, England, wherever, in New Zealand, yeah, somebody owes his friend ribis. Interest. Based in. <laughs> Yeah, the judge, whoever, what is it? They, they, they say, give him the ribis. You owe it to the bank, you owe it to the right to the lender. That kind of ribis, we say the other way around by us, it's ktsutsa. And then we said that by us, the person who received such ribis has to give it back to the loyva, just the opposite, the opposite of the going. And then we mentioned one case of a very similar case to us. What happens with the mashkanta? What happens if somebody sits in a land of mashkanta and eats the fruit? There, Ravina said clearly, it's not Ribis Ktsutsa. <laughs> Mamash our case. Mamash our case. I lent million. I'm going to get million. Either my name is Akiva Tachta or Tim McKenzie. Each one is, is the opposite. But at the end of the day, yeah, I gave the million. I will get back million. Meanwhile, I'm eating all the fruit. It's not called Ribis Ktsutsa. Why? Says Rashi. Because sometimes the land doesn't yield any fruit. Maybe it will be drought. Not only you don't know the numbers, which is a problem, one of the numbers may be zero. And every not called Rubis Ktsutza. So how can Rabina Paskin call Rubis Ktsutza? Answers the Rosh, and that takes you to my shot from last week. That's the third shot. Says Rosh as follows. This has nothing to do with Rubis. Yes, the reason why it has to come back is because of good old, the beginning of the page today, the beginning of the Amud, Mechila Betoos, Havya Mechila. Mechila Betoos is actually loy havi mechila according to him. Which means, that person who sold the land to the woman, yeah, according to the Rosh, I assume, he thought that she's really eating the fruit kedin. He thought she's going to fulfill the condition. Maybe the agent was he was misled. Who? The seller. The seller thought she really is entitled to it, everything as the owner. He didn't realize that he has the right to stand by his condition. Or maybe he knew that she's going to follow the condition. After three, four, five years, he comes with the land. The lady says, what? Which condition? I didn't know anything. So because of that mistake, what did he do really here? Mechila betos. Mechila betos. All these years she ate, he was sure that what? That she is really eating from her own thing, where really she was eating from his thing. He thought that there was actually a mechira because he thought that the condition will be fulfilled. There was miscommunication. And therefore, by the way, the Rosh doesn't say that scenario. It's my explanation, the Rosh. The Rosh doesn't say much. The Rosh says that he mistakenly thought that, that it was hers and really wasn't. Such a case is called what? Well, mechila betos. He's aware of the fact that she's eating and everything. He followed the field because he wants to get it back. So he followed through. So he, and not like I know. He knows the facts. But he does know that she is misled, mis, 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 misled right? And therefore, he is mechila, mechila betos. That's why, nothing to do with ribis. All the fruit you ate, lady, you know why? Ah, I'm trying to appease you people. You keep asking about chazoka. You know, I pass by your land every day and I smiled and said good morning, you know, uh, because are we eating the fruit? Because I really thought it was your field. But Lemay said, now I know it's not your field because I got the money back, right? Or I know that you never had it in mind to fulfill my condition. It's a real trespasser. I didn't know that. You, I didn't know what you were thinking. I've avoid the whole scam now came to light, and therefore all these fruit that I was moichel was based on toes. Nothing to do with ribis. Give me back all the fruit because simply they belong to me. Because right from day one it was not a mechira. It was just a loan, and therefore all the time you ate nothing to the ribis. I mistakenly thought it belonged to you. And really, they belong to me. Mechila betos, unlike Rav Nach, we argue in Rav Nachman, we say Mechila betos, lo avi Mechila. Uh oh, I'm now re, I'm now what? I'm now uh, all rebellious and hot about it. And I say, no, this field was really mine. And all the fruit you ate was really, were really mine. 
And therefore, give it back to me, Mitzan Mechil Batoslav Mechila, that beautifully connects the entire sugi to the previous sugi before. And it's really not because of ribis. Now, you could say, you could say, by the way, it's because of ribis ktsutza, but Ravina himself cannot say that. Because Ravina doesn't think it's ktsutza. So why do you say to give it back? It's not because it's my land. In the case, oh, which is very good, by the way, let, let me, oh, Baruch Hashem, let me tie the knots completely. At the beginning of the parak, Ravina spoke about a case was clearly alvo. Alvo, alvo, nothing but alvo. Alva, the entire alva, nothing but alva. Of course, in that case, I don't have to give you back anything. Everybody knew all the facts down to the T. I know it's alva on both sides, loiv and malve. Why should I give it back to you? Ribis? That's not called ribis ktsutza. Maybe grapes will grow, maybe not, ta ta ta. Nothing decided, that's not called ktsutza. I, over here, what's the difference? Because miscommunication. I thought, I, I thought that what really it is sold to you and you realize the condition. You came there, Mitzad, being the owner forever and ever. We're not in line with each other, lady. And therefore, all the fruit you ate were, uh, and I was like grinning and happy about it, was assuming that you know what I'm talking about. Well, you didn't. It's not your fault. I know it's not your fault. So what? At the end of the day, I'm not Moichel. The Mechila was based on a mistake. Mechila based on a mistake is not a Mechila. Give me back everything you ate. Nothing to do with this. That's a Rosh and the Toysfers. Thank you very much. It's Loch Rabba time for questions. And have a good day, everybody, in Zoom, here, YouTube, and mainly on Torah anytime. Thank you very much.